Hi everyone, I'm Huey Lin. I'm director of the Houston Methodist Adult Congenital Heart Program. With me today, we have Paul Cunningham, who is chairman of the Department of Cardiology at Houston Methodist Woodlands. And for this session on Congenital Heart Awareness Week, we're gonna be talking about how cracking a code for half a heart came with the Fontan. Dr. Cunningham. All right, so we're gonna start with the case presentation. There's a 45-year-old man who presented with hematemesis. He had multiple prior heart surgeries, multiple catheter ablations for, quote, arrhythmias. And on his chart, he had a, quote, Fontan procedure. So we're going to talk a little bit about how a single ventricle physiology works. So to get there, first of all, let's talk about how normal physiology works. So first of all, here we have a box diagram. And what this is showing is how the blue blood comes in from the SVC and the IVC into the right side of the heart. Then the job of the right side of the heart is to pump that blue blood to the lungs. And then as it goes through the lungs, then the blood gets oxygenated and becomes red, comes back through the pulmonary venous circulation to the left side of the heart. And then the left side of the heart's job is to pump that oxygenated blood to the body. And of course, in the body, the body extracts the oxygen and it comes back blue through the venous circulation and the process starts all over again. However, what do you do if you're missing one of your ventricles? And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about patients who are born with a single ventricle physiology. So then the question is, how do you actually continue despite that? And the goal then is to use the one single ventricle that exists then to pump to the systemic circulation, whereas you have to get around not having a ventricle. So that's what this looks like here. So in this particular situation, we have a single left ventricle, and the single left ventricle is pumping that red blood to the body through the aorta. And instead of having a right ventricle now, what we're going to do is we're gonna bypass the right ventricle completely, redirecting all the venous blue blood to the pulmonary artery. And that's what's called the Fontan circulation. So the first question, what is the goal of the Fontan procedure? A, diverting venous blood to the lungs without a ventricle. B, ASD repair. C, aortic valve replacement. Or D, VSD repair. And of course the correct answer here is to divert the venous blood to the lungs without a ventricle, as you see illustrated here in this example. So this is a little bit more of an anatomical illustration. What you see is the SVC and the IVC coming into what used to be the right atrium which has now been connected to the pulmonary artery. And that's how you're going to get your venous blue blood to the lungs. And then what you see is a common ventricular chamber that's pumping the red blood directly to the aorta and to the rest of the body. So this is what's called a classic Fontan, which is what our patient had. So as you can imagine, in this particular situation with Fontan, there can be a number of different complications. And one of the things that you might predict is an issue is that because the patient has gone through so many different heart surgeries and there are so many different scar lines that the patient will be at risk for atrial arrhythmias because much of the work is done to the atria. That means they can be at risk for atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, atrial tachycardia, etc. And then the other problem is that because many of these surgeries are done when they're children, um, there can be kinking or obstruction of the different parts of the Fontan circulation. So that can be anywhere from the venous system, but more likely problems with the pulmonary arterial circulation. So when you hook the Fontan circuit into the pulmonary arterial circulation, you can actually kink it, and that can lead to obstructions that present not only in childhood, but also in adulthood. And of course, because this is all a venous passive flow system that actually doesn't have a ventricle, it's very sensitive to any kind of obstruction and can lead the patient to become very, very sick if there's any type of stenosis. And of course, as you might predict, if you have one single ventricle that's pumping the entire circulation, the entire life of this patient, any type of heart failure, any type of valvular issues in this patient are going to be very, very problematic. So typically the atrioventricular valve, what's commonly termed the mitral valve in the left ventricle, is a problem if it develops any type of significant regurgitation. And then finally, as you can imagine, these patients have a higher systemic venous pressure because there is no right ventricle and there is no tricuspid valve. So what that means is that it subjects the liver to a very high pressure as well as the systemic veins, which then creates a problem where the patient's body will grow an alternative pathway to bypass that circuit. What that means then is oftentimes these veins will grow connections to the pulmonary venous system, which then creates a right to left shunt. And then they can actually become hypoxic. So they may actually develop a oxygen saturation in the high 80s to low 90s. 
Question two, cardiac complications in patients with single ventricle physiology include all of the following except A, atrial arrhythmias such as flutter or fibrillation, B, intracardiac thrombi and pulmonary stenoses, C, heart failure and atrioventricular valve regurgitation, or D, pulmonic valve regurgitation. And of course, this is a trick question. As we talked about, there's actually no ventricle connected to the pulmonary circulation, right? That's the whole goal of the Fontan circulation. So there is no specifically pulmonic valve, so there can't be pulmonic valve regurgitation. The only uh, semilunar valve that exists at this point is now connected to the aorta. So that's a trick question. So let's go back to our patient. So you might ask the question, well, why would a patient with a Fontan circulation have hematemesis? And if you think about the situation, because the liver is subjected to these high pressures their entire life, from the time that they actually have a Fontan procedure done, usually between three to five years of age, they're going to have their uh, liver insulted by this high pressure. And so what that means is they, they begin to develop cirrhosis and liver failure and even portal hypertension at a very early age. And so that must be on your differential. And then, of course, the problem is any kind of management that has to occur in these patients can be complex because at the end of the day, they only have one ventricle and they're very, very sensitive to any changes in preload or their pulmonary uh, vasculature. So what that means is then any type of anesthesia should be managed by somebody who has experience in managing a Fontan patient because of not only the hemodynamic problems of having a single ventricle, but also the fact that you know for a fact that they're going to have trouble metabolizing anesthesia because of their impaired liver function. Question three. Extra cardiac complications in patients with single ventricle physiology include all of the following except A, liver failure, B, protein losing enteropathy, C, inflammatory bowel disease, and D, hemoptysis. So this is a little bit of a harder question. Um, so we talked a couple about, uh, about a couple of these things, but we haven't yet talked about um, the other issues. So typically our patients don't necessarily get inflammatory bowel disease, but they definitely are at risk for the other three, including liver failure, which we mentioned, protein losing enteropathy, and then finally hemoptysis. So why do they get these issues? So the problem at the end of the day is because you rely 100% on this venous flow going to the pulmonary circulation, you can get stasis and then that can allow the blood to clot. So oftentimes our patients are at very high risk for intracardiac thrombi, which in the setting of this system can be catastrophic. And so many of them require some type of anticoagulation, whether it's aspirin or warfarin, et cetera. The other problem is that oftentimes they have cyanosis when they're children before they undergo the Fontan procedure. And so what that means is then they will develop arterial pulmonary collaterals, and this is what they look like. So what you're seeing here is an injection of the bronchial artery, which has now given rise to all this nest of collaterals that goes to the pulmonary circulation. And because these are abnormal vessels, they're very friable and fragile. And so what can happen is that they can break and cause massive hemoptysis. And unfortunately, they don't necessarily go away after the Fontan procedure is done, and so we have to have a very high index of suspicion when a patient with Fontan presents with hemoptysis that it could be a herald bleed for something much worse. And then of course, as we talked about, the liver is subject to this very high pressure the entire life after the Fontan procedure, and so they can develop portal hypertension, cirrhosis, or even in some situations, hepatocellular carcinoma. And then lastly, uh, if you can imagine this venous circulation being very um, elevated in pressure, it can back up into the gut. And so sometimes what we see is that uh, because there's an elevated venous pressure in the gut, they will leak protein into the gut. And then of course, if you leak large massive amounts of protein, we can see some of the similar problems that we see in say nephrotic syndrome, such as hypercoagulability, which as we talked about in the very first point here can be catastrophic for these patients but then they can also lose all kinds of other problems that come with losing proteins, such as losing their uh, gamma globulins and becoming relatively immunodeficient, um, and then also having uh, nutritional deficiencies and cachexia as a result of that, all in the setting of already having a cardiac issue. So it's a very complicated problem once we start to see complications from Fontan. 
So in summary, Fontan patients who are single ventricle physiology can be very complicated, um, even though they are actually living to adulthood today, and oftentimes they're living very well into their third and fourth decade or even fifth decade. So they are at risk for atrial arrhythmias, as you might expect from their surgery. They're at risk for intracardiac thrombi, mechanical complications, and even importantly, heart failure. Non-cardiac complications include liver failure and cirrhosis, hemoptysis, and most importantly, protein-losing enteropathy. Comprehensive management of such high-risk patients really requires collaboration between team members such as yourself and myself within the context of a systems process. And so that is best served in an ACHD comprehensive care center like the Houston Methodist System Adult Congenital Heart Program. So Dr. Cunningham, I want to say thank you for your support for the Adult Congenital Heart Program as well as thank you for being here for today's session on this very complicated subject matter and sharing our patient. It was my pleasure. I enjoyed it. So join us all week for this exciting new area. You can join us for Houston Methodist Congenital Heart Awareness Week activities. And if you want to learn even more from patients and national experts at the Houston Methodist Adult Congenital Heart Virtual Symposium, you can join us on November 7th. Sign up at the link below.